everybody. Woo-hoo-hoo, buddy. Welcome to the Bow Fishing Buzz. Yes, sir. Episode double H, Schmitty. 88. Still can't believe we're that far. I say that every wow, podcast, but I still wow, can't wow. believe it. It's a lot of episodes right there. Here with D. Schmitty. And I'm Matthew. Brought to you by AMS Bowfishing and... Mega Mouth Bowfishing as well. Bowfishing Buzz, sponsored by End Designs, Ooh, Leatherwork and Embroidery. Yes, Efficiency Bowfishing oh, Lights by Outdoor Innovations goodness. USA. Some fantastic sponsors. Wow. We are pumped up here, Matt. We come up here every <laughs> once every two weeks. You know, we do it bi-weekly here, and I, I'm not going to lie. It's my favorite hour, two hours of the day. Absolutely. Just coming up here and talking. Yes. It's, it's fun. Have a good old time. We hope you enjoy them. Yeah, absolutely. Hope you enjoy them, because yep. we have a good time talking yeah. to you about everything, so... Yep. Yep. Uh, Schmitty, we are staying busy. Yes, we are. We're staying extremely busy down in the shop. Yep. Yep. Um, you, you act, we actually just got plucked from jobs that we were doing. Absolutely. You know, in the shop today. My my hands hurt from building <laughs> Megamouth reels. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing I'd rather do production-wise than build reels, but I tell you what, oh, when I bend the fingers, they kind of go, oh, yep. Yep. Or like a little creak to them. But. <laughs> I was packaging retrievers, mm-hmm. building retrievers. Yep. Building arrows, mm-hmm. packaging arrows, spooling line in the retrievers. We're staying busy here. Yeah. Something, too, that I've noticed a trend here in the last couple of weeks, Matt. Totally makes sense with the time of year. We're starting to move more big game stuff. Though That, yep. that gator season is coming it's into full swing. Right there. Yep. Right there. Yep. Um, I think, you know, a lot of – I think there's areas – you when you guys were down in Florida, when did that? When were you guys down there? Was that August? October. Oh, it was October. Yep. Gotcha. Are there yep. some states that open up as early as August? Some areas, it's depending on what tag you have. You have nuisance oh, okay. tags, which gotcha. is you know pretty much year round. Yep. yep. Get them um, out. Otherwise, you have specific times in different states. It's just like turkey hunting sure. and stuff gotcha. like that, where you have gotcha. specific okay. time zones, yep. units, and stuff like that. So there's areas where it's it's going on right now. Yeah. And if it, if it hasn't, it's going to be happening very right. soon. So we're in the heart right. of that, absolutely. So very cool stuff, absolutely. Yeah. You want to just kind of dive into, Matt, where we are, like, time of year-wise? We're kind of in an interesting time frame for yes. bow fishing. That's right, Schmitty. Um, we're in that transitioning period right yes. now. It's a, yep. There's a big transition that's going to be happening here. Yep. yep. And it's a great time to get out there in the water. Yeah. You know, we've had the, the hot, you know, Junes, Julys. The first halves of August are always hot yep. and sticky. Dog and stuff days like, of summer. Yes. Yep. yep. But we're going to see a transition here now. Cooler nights are going to oh, yeah. start popping in. Yep. That vegetation is going to start thinning out a little bit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Fish are going to start appearing where you couldn't see them before. Right. Areas that were choked out, you couldn't right. see six inches, are going to be a little bit easier yes. to get into. Yep. Yeah. Not only fish, Mitty. Yes. But what kind of fish? Big. Yes. Fish, those kind of fish. The tankers come yeah. back in. A oh, bit. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I think, you know, you know this, obviously, but we know of a lot of big fish, especially here in Wisconsin. Yeah. It's it's nationwide, but especially here in Wisconsin that are shot. These big fish are shot in late August, September. Right. October. Yep. While everyone else is hunting the rut, there's people shooting big fish in Absolutely. November. Absolutely. December. Yeah. You know, guys, before, before it ices up or it gets too cold to be out right. shooting, there's guys shooting big fish. You just got to... I mean, it's, it's just like anything. You just got to learn what these fish are wanting to do, mm-hmm. given the, the time of year and mm-hmm. the, the environment that they're in. So so don't give up. No, absolutely not. Stick with it because yep. there's some great bow fishing coming up yeah. here yeah. in the next couple months. Yep. Great bow fishing. Yep. Only thing you got to be a little careful with this time of year, Schmitty, is you might run into some fog in the, in yep. the early mornings yep. if you're be heading back to bull that. launch. Yep. Because those temperatures are definitely dropping right. um, colder than the water temperatures. Yeah. I was actually, we we're, were just talking um, in the shop earlier today. This past weekend, I was up north, and we were in the northern part of Wisconsin, so it's a little bit cooler up there to begin with. Mm-hmm. But we woke up; the temperature was forty-five degrees. Wow, which is cold. That's a cold front up yep, here, you it, know, this yep, time of that year. Came through last weekend, but it can still happen. You know, it, it obviously it happened. And then that that we woke up Saturday morning, forty-five degrees. Saturday that same day at maybe three o'clock, four o'clock, it was eighty-five Isn't degrees. That crazy? We have a forty-degree <laughs> temperature swing. I mean, that's wild. It Welcome to Wisconsin, yeah, if I've no ever kidding. seen it before. But yeah. you know, that's just the kind of stuff that you're dealing with with these. You know, that can create fog but at the same time it can move fish into areas they haven't been since may or early june mm-hmm. um it can be it can be a cool time of year yeah it's very cool so so don't give up no Stick absolutely not absolutely Great not. Bowfish are coming up yeah yeah yep. you know another thing that we're doing a lot this time of year is uh you know i've a, it's kind of a year-round deal for both of us but we like to go out and work some dirt toss some oh, seed yeah. spread some fertilizer yep and watch our little babies grow oh you've been out putting plots in matt i am done nice that's awesome. I just finished my last couple little smaller food plots here. 
last Friday. Cool. I that's, am done. That's fantastic. I put all my little, all, all my little implements, implements away. away and got them up to the front up by the shed there. That's a good and, and feeling. I'm done. Yeah. I'm done. Yeah. Yep. After beating the heck out of them for how long, it's like, <laughs> all right, they're going to go yep. back to rest for right. 10 more months right. here. Yeah. Yep. yeah. So I am that's done. Cool. How about that's you? That's awesome. Actually, last night, uh, Dad and I went out and I... We got a little area that we kind of broke for the first time this year, and uh, I quack dug it. We fertilized it, dragged it level, and then we spread on. seed on it. You dragged the duck through it? You quacked it? A quack digger is oh, the name oh, of my... Oh. I see. <laughs> we tied a duck to a rope, <laughs> <laughs> and I just dragged it around. Oh, yeah, poor filler. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was, a, it was a quack digger, which actually, side story here, it's my, my great uncle's quack digger, all right? He is guessing that it was purchased... On the, the, the family farm that yep. I, I hunt on. Yep. Uh, he's guessing that that quack digger was purchased somewhere around the 1940s. Oh, my goodness. And it, like, yeah, there's areas on it that are, you know, there's rust and there's areas wow. that you have, you'd have to replace a bolt because something sheared. It works perfectly. That's it's 80 awesome. years that, old. That's, they don't make stuff like they, they used to. Not. That's insane. That is right. They don't that's make stuff crazy. like that anymore. Yeah, but I mean, it was. Um, you know, there's like exposed chains on it and stuff that are just <laughs> flying around. Totally not safe, but it works. It works fantastic. So last night we got that little that little third acre planted, and then we have of two weeks ago, week one week ago maybe we got everything else done and, and planted. So a kind of same thing last night. Last night I cleaned up the spreader, sprayed WD forty on it, greased the mm-hmm. the axle on it. So kind of the same yep. deal. And now it's. I'm kind of, you're shifting into like, all right, let's see what we got inventory wise for deer. Now let's, it's time. I've had my cameras open. Now's the time to get your cameras out yep, there. Yep. Start spotting some of them fields yep. with spotting glasses and stuff like that. Yep. And, and checking them and, and, and getting ready, you know, shooting your bow and stuff yep. like that. And getting yep. your equipment all tuned in and right. primed in for the right. season. So it's an exciting time of year, to be yeah. honest with you. It's Absolutely. Pretty cool, but Absolutely. Yeah. Well, Schmitty, on our last podcast, we had the trivia. We did have bow fishing trivia, yeah. and I did not like it. And I whooped your buttocks. I whooped it. Zero stars. All right. Stupid. So I, I, I'm, I'm going to let you redeem yourself here a little bit. I have an easy, oh, question, no. for you. I have an easy get... question for you. Okay. Okay. How old are you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, let me do the math. 1997. <laughs> I am 26 years old. Man. Okay. okay. 20, you're Good 26 enough. years old. 26. Schmitty, this weekend. Okay. The wife and I are celebrating our 28th Holy anniversary. Cow. First off, <laughs> huge, huge congratulations. Thank that you. is fantastic. <laughs> Second of all, I think it's hilarious that you've been married longer than I've been on this yeah, earth. That's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. That's wild. Yep. That's even yep. weird for me to wrap my head around. 28 years. 28 years. Wow. Guess what we're doing? Um, you guys are going to go bull fishing? No. Nope. You're going to uh, go, uh, out to eat? No. Well, we probably will, but. You're going to buy her flowers and serenade her in a meadow. la de da <laughs> Oh, Julie. Oh, Julie. <laughs> I don't <Hey> know. My lady. <laughs> <laughs> what, what are you guys going to do? We are going to Iowa. Iowa? Yeah, we're going to Makakita. Oh, Makakita, <laughs> Iowa. Yes, yeah, of yeah, course. Yeah. Obviously. <laughs> what the world we is there? We are going to the World of Outlaw Late Models for some dirt track racing. Oh, my gosh. That's <laughs> that's pretty cool that Julie's, you know, she's good with having her anniversary yeah. down at the racetrack. That's yeah. pretty cool. That's yeah. awesome. They got the Hawkeye 100 down there. Cool. So, yeah, we're going down. I, I just mentioned it to her that, hey, I says the Late Models are in Iowa. I says it's about a four and a half hour trip. She goes, really? I was like, oh, she's wow, interested. Wow, you've created a monster. <laughs> She loves it. That's awesome. That's yeah. very cool. Well, that'll yeah. be fun. What time when are you guys leaving for that? Friday morning. Friday. Races Saturday? Friday night and Saturday night. Cool. That's awesome. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Yeah. It's a Hawkeye 100. So they on Friday night, it's a 40 lap feature. And then on Saturday night, it's a 60 lap feature. Okay. Gotcha. So, yeah, we're excited about that. Yeah. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. very cool. Nice little thing. But for that's, you guys what to do. Just, that's what I was just, that's I was wondering about. So you did get a point for your, you did Booyah, know, you baby. Did know the, the, your age. So Comeback so, City. So, there you go. You're in a comeback. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, Schmidty. Um, this weekend is the last Wisconsin Bow Fishing Association tournament Aww. on the Mississippi River. So sad. On pools 8 and 11. You got your big 20, you got your numbers division, and your hobby class division. Gotcha, gotcha. I love that tournament, and I just messaged Jody Begolke last night, and I says, dude, I says, it's our anniversary this weekend. They must have changed the dates on it because oh, I could always shoot it in sure. the past. right, right. Yep. Uh, I, I really like that tournament. It's hmm, a fun tournament. That's too bad. It's really a, a diverse tournament. Species tournament, you know, yeah. on the Mississippi River yeah. there. 
Yeah. Uh, pools eight through eleven. So um, anybody that's down there shooting in that, good luck. Have fun. Be oh, safe. Oh, absolutely. Shoot fish. Yeah. And, yeah. um, and send us some pictures. Yeah, but it's the last one of the season. That's sad. It's kind of sad. It is. It is kind of sad. <laughs> I have a question for you, Matt. Yes. Have you heard? Is how is the hobby class doing for these WBA tournaments? The hobby class, since since the the board has brought that in as yes. a division, yeah, is phenomenal. Oh, great! It, it's just absolutely great. Oh. Uh, the teams that are showing up that would never show up to tournaments in the past sure. are showing up. Uh, you know, we might get anywhere from twelve to twenty teams in that hobby class division. Wow, that's a that's a good amount of teams. Yes. Good the lord. Entry fee <clears throat> isn't as much as your big twenty and your numbers. Gotcha. Your entry fee is not as as much. Yep. Uh, you can't shoot with an airboat in that. Um, okay. Sure. It's, yep. it's just to get those teams that were kind of on the board or a little intimidated to come to tournaments to start coming to tournaments. Yeah. And man, I tell you what, the WBA here in Wisconsin, boom. Yeah. Hats off they on nailed it. that. Kinda, they did. That's perfect. Yep. Yep. That's perfect. Just from just, I just happened to to think of that when you were reading that, but I just put myself back in my like seventeen year old shoes. Right. right. Having a little sixteen foot John boat that me and a buddy bought together. Yes. I would have never – I can totally see how I would have been intimidated to enter a tournament with these guys who do – they shoot them all the time. They've got a big boat, a big rig. They're pulling it around with a you know, a $100,000 truck. That would have been intimidating exactly. as heck for me. I exactly. wouldn't want to do it, but yes. that would make all the difference right yes. there. So that's yes. very cool. That's very cool. Yep. Yep. So it's, it's a great thing that they started here, and I'm glad they did that. And sure. it's, it's great to see the good results yeah. that are coming out of that hobby class division. Yeah, that's yeah. very cool. That's mm-hmm. very cool. Well, mm-hmm. I tell you what, Matt, we do have a guest that will be joining us today. Why don't you enlighten yeah. our listeners what a fantastic who is this fantastic person that we're gonna we're gonna talk to today? I consider this person a legend in bow fishing. Oh, we're calling Matt Schilling right now. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I have a ton of respect for this person. Um, what he has done in the bow fishing world is mm-hmm. tremendous. Yep. It's wonderful. It's all on his own free time that he does this. Um, we're going to be giving Randy Woodward a call, um, uh, from Oklahoma. He is a retired firefighter, firefighter. Um, but Randy has been bow fishing for a long time. Um, he's in the BAA Hall of Fame. He's organized the Youth Worlds Championship. Yeah. He's been running that for over 20 years. Yep. That in itself is crazy. Right. Uh, once once he kind of got that champ- youth championship going there, he wanted to do some more, so he he created he started the, the Ladies Bow Fishing Championship or the Women's Bow Fishing Championship down there in Oklahoma. Um, he's a BAA World Champ, uh, along with several first-place finishes in tournaments. Um, Randy is, is uh, a super guy who doesn't take a lot of credit. He does it out of the purity of his heart. Exactly. He loves the, the sport. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, I, I called Randy earlier this week, and I said, hey, Randy, we talked a little bit and stuff, and uh, I said, you want to be on our podcast? Well, I, I don't know how to do that, you know? <laughs> sure. He, yep. You know? He, yep. He, yep. And I decided you just got to talk to us like we're at a boat landing. Sure. You know, just talk to us. We're going to call you. Just, just We're just going to chat with yep. you and ask you some questions yep. and um, but I'm super excited to hear some of his stories because I, what I want to know is, what were those first tournaments that you went to? What was the atmosphere like? Sure. How many people How many were people shooting? Showed up? What kind of equipment was there? Right. Uh, yeah. Uh, what kind of fish were you shooting? Yeah. You right. Know? What was what was the what was the um uh, what am I what's the word I'm looking for? What was the, what's the format? Yeah, what was it? Right. What were you weighing in? What? I'm I'm going to be guessing back years ago when it really first started. It was numbers. Numbers okay. was yeah. the main sure. thing years ago. Sure. Yep. Yeah, but um, just want to you know, I think it's going to be yeah. really That'll interesting. Be interesting. Yeah, and to see how he started out with becoming a voice in the bow community, sure. with these tournaments and, and stuff he's putting out for the youth and the women and yeah. stuff like that. There to to some of his most memorable moments on the water, yeah. some of his how he got started in bow fishing. Who's the one who taught? Who's the one who introduced Randy Woodward to bow fishing? Yeah. Yeah, you know they must have done a hell of a job because they, they really instilled that they passion. Uh, he, in Randy he is there. someone that uh, we all should look up to. Oh, in the yeah. bow fishing world. Yeah, yep, mm-hmm. yep. That's awesome, uh, Matt. Not to change topic here, but I believe the last podcast we had, we were talking about how the Cajun Eight was coming up that weekend. Correct? correct? Was yes. that how that was? Exactly. Well, the Cajun Eight is since over with. Done. Let's, Done. let's run through mm-hmm. some of those results from the Cajun Eight. Absolutely, absolutely. So, uh, coming in first place. Team Descalin, weighing in 367.2 pounds, winning $10,000. Mm. Man. 
Not AMS pro fellas. staff team. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Represent yeah. Team AMS. That's awesome. Second place is Team Force Feed and Bowl Fishing, weighing in 366.4 pounds, winning $5,000. Shout out to Max Wadlington. Very well done. Force yep. Feed em, Yep. dealer of ours down mm-hmm. in Kentucky. Check them out. All of your bow fishing needs. Nice shooting by Force Feed em there. Um, one of the team members, I believe, on Team Force Feed em, Justin Cook. Oh, yes. Okay. Who we had our, our Fish You Wish last week. Yes, that's there. right. Yes. That giant big head. So, so they know what they're doing when oh, it comes yes, to doing biggies. Do. Yes, they do. Yeah. Yeah. Second place finish in the Cajun 8 shows that. That's cool. Absolutely. Uh, coming in third place, Team On Track. Another AMS Pro Staff <laughs> yeah. team. Weighing in 362.6 pounds, winning $3,000. Awesome. Now, look at this here, Derek. There was a lot of talk before this tournament. Mm-hmm. Oh, the big heads. Oh, the, 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 yep. All this jibber jabberish on people shooting big heads and targeting big heads and blah, 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 you know. Look at the weights from first to third place. 367. Oh my gosh. Wow. 367, 366, 362. Yeah, five pounds. Five pounds difference. Yeah. Between the top three teams. Yeah. Yeah. That's ridiculous. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yep. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Uh fourth place. Team Donation Station Bow Fishing, weighing in 326.6 pounds, winning $2,000. Nice shooting there. Well, they were better than a donation station on that trip. Yeah, they were. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Uh, coming in fifth place, Team Second Place. Wow. <laughs> is that? <laughs> it's kind of goofy. It is. Yep, yep. Uh, weighing in 324 pounds, winning $1,250. Cool. Heaviest Big Head went to Team Second Place as well, weighing in at, oh, my yes, goodness. Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, let me restart that. I got just thrown for a <laughs> loop by the, <laughs> the heaviest big head went to team second place, weighing in at 93.8 wow. pounds. Holy cow. Wow. wow. Uh, the heaviest grass cart went to team night prowlers mm. with a 47.2 pounder. Heaviest silver cart went to team CNC, weighing in at 24.8 pounds. Heaviest gar went to team banded, uh, b- 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 banded. <laughs> I don't know if I should read that. Oh, yep. <laughs> team banded bastards. <laughs> <laughs> Weighing in at uh, 15.2 pounds for the heaviest gar. Apple's going to put a little E next to our uh, <laughs> podcast yeah. now. Yep. Uh, heaviest common carp goes to Geno's Hunting and Fishing. Oh, shout out to Geno's. Yep. That's awesome. Weighing in at 10.2 pounds. That just blows my mind. That does. That's so weird. That's just <laughs> so tiny weird. little carp. Yep. Yep. <laughs> uh, then rounding out was the heaviest buffalo goes to Team Lights Out Bow Fishing, weighing in at 26.4 pounds. Nice. Nice shooting there. Some big yeah. fish in that yes. tournament. Wow. Yeah. So, you know, what's interesting, Derek, on that. Yeah. Oh, I oh, just got a geez. message. Sorry. About okay. That. I just got a message. The, the interesting thing about that, Derek, is there there's teams that are starting to, you know, learn these biggies as well. Yeah. Right, right. And it, like we talk in the past, Matt, it's an evolution of a sport. Right. Something comes in, dominates for a while, people start to figure it out, and then it's just a revolving door of constantly relearning right. different tactics. And you, and you know what it is, Derek, is you have teams out there that say, I don't like the biggest, I don't like that bull fishing. Yeah. Well, if you want to compete, you better start learning right. if you're bull fishing in those areas that have them because yeah. there's going to be teams that are going to start learning them as well. Right. Adapt or die. That's what it exactly. comes down to. I mean, really. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Yep. You got to know what you're going to do. And if, if you if you refuse to learn, then be okay with, <laughs> you know, having mediocre results. Right. That's with anything in life. Mm-hmm. Really. Really, mm-hmm. it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's exactly. cool. That's cool. Exactly. So, Derek, this past weekend. Oh, shitty. Okay. We got somebody calling here. How many times does this need to happen? We got somebody calling here. Let's see who this is here. Hello, this is the Bow Fishing Buzz. Who's calling? It's Cranky the oh, Carp. Oh, oh, Cranky's oh, oh, oh. back. Cranky's back. <laughs> oh, boy, Matt. Oh, boy. I'm... Good to talk to you, boys. How you doing, Smitty? I'm doing good. How are you, Cranky? I tell you, I might have to change my name to Happy Carp. Oh, good. Oh, boy. Oh, I'm not gonna lie, boys. I think I found the gill of my life. Oh, no way, cranky! Wow. Yep, Heather's the one, Matt. Wow. Good deal. That's well, awesome. Let, hold on. Let's back up here a little bit because you were on an adventure a yes. couple weeks ago. You were heading south through yep. the lock and dams all the way, all the way down. And I think last time you called, you were like halfway down there, cranky, to hook up with Heather the carp. 
Yeah. And, and finally th- met her. Oh, wow. He's the real deal, Matt. No Made all kidding. the way to Kentucky. So yeah. you, you, didn't get, of- you didn't get catfished. No, Matt. Oh, good deal. <laughs> good deal. <laughs> Matt, I, I, I might be in love this time, Matt. No kidding. One. Wow. No kidding. That's great to hear. Yep. I'm so happy for you. Yep. Yeah, we, uh, we spent the week watching the Olympics. Oh, <laughs> nice. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I, uh, what were your I favorite you moments? Know, Matt, I, in 2020, I was in the Olympics. I did not know that. I didn't cranky. know that either. I swam. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you were darn good at it too. <laughs> oh man! Oh my gosh! Wow. Okay. Did you did you get any gold medals for swimming? <laughs> Cranky is cranked up. Cranky is cracking oh, up. No. Had <laughs> tickle on my fin. Oh, oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! Wow. So, you know, he gets turned off when I talk about my uh, athletic days. <laughs> oh, but, I yeah, see. Yeah, Michael Phelps ain't got nothing on me. He oh. doesn't, huh? But it was always weird, Matt. Lots of professional swimmers, and they look around, they got lifeguards. Like, come on, we can out swim the lifeguards. Yeah, <laughs> that is a little weird, honestly. <laughs> you know what's really weird? You brought that up to me. Me and Heather watching the Olympics. The okay. pole vault guy. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. He jumped so high. And his cod, the cod fish in his pants got stuck on the high bar. Lost the gold medal. <laughs> that was pretty nuts. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one, Smitty. <laughs> oh, my god! Oh, man. That was wild. That, that video you, went viral. It was, it was really full, full, full of surprises, but I think my favorite. Was the Australian break dancer? Oh my gosh! That like yeah, she looked that like one of them fish eyes. at the bottom. She looked like a fish at the bottom of the boat after you both had yes. thrown and flipped yes. and flopped and gone in circles. Oh, it was unbelievable! Oh, Me and Heather no. laughed, oh. but I gotta tell you, USA came through. That's what it's all about. Absolutely, hard work. A lot of hard working young athletes out there. But you know, Matt. What's up, Cranky? One day, bow fishing's going to be an Olympic sport. Hey, wouldn't that be cool? That would be awesome. Yes, it would. That would be cool. I mean, God, if the Australians can break dance, surely you Americans can figure out how to stick a fish and win this thing. Right. We definitely can, Cranky. We oh, definitely we'd, got that we'd figured get, out. We'd get gold, 100%. Yes, yes. absolutely. Yep. I saw I, every time I, I get on my shell phone and look at Facebook, you Ames guys are always on a podium somewhere. I believe I just seen another one that the, the Cajun thing. Yeah, that's yep. right. Rams won again. Yes, yep. they did. Yes, yep. they did. Mm-hmm. They took first that, and third. They were on the podium. You are correct. That, mm-hmm. That's the team that needs to lead us to the U.S. Olympics. I agree, Gold Cranky. Cranky. Very I agree 100%. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. That's mm-hmm. great. Idea. They grind it. They sure grind it. Yes. Yes, they do. They do a good job. So, yeah. Cranky, so, so, it, so Heather's yeah. with you right now, Cranky? Well, she's in and out. Okay. She swims in and out. I got you. We're down at the we're down at the plant. See, there's this is a little weird, but we're down. Well, all the damn dogs. Oh, that, there's a dogfish in the <laughs> background. There's a dogfish. Yes. They're just dogfish. I got Heather's got two dogfish and a catfish kitten. Oh, oh really? I see. Always, okay. Always wow. barking, doing dumb things. I'm sorry. <laughs> they're nice. They're nice dogs. Well, so are, cranky. Are you still down in Kentucky, or are you? Are you still down yep. there? Yep, this is gonna be my last week here, and then uh, okay, we we got to do some talk, and uh, I, I wanted to travel back to Wisconsin, but I got she she told me flat up she's scared of you bow fishermen. Oh, yeah, and she should be scared I told of her us. about my love life. Yep, she should you be scared. Whack them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you whack them. Yep, See, because in Kentucky, yeah, they shoot the big heads. They don't right. they don't mess with us commons. They can't sure, be right. Yep, yep. Yeah, she comes up here. She better be scared of me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, if, if she sees yeah, me, she's probably saying. My other girlfriend, Beverly. Yeah, you that's put right. One of you guys got Beverly. Yeah, we took her to Barrel Town. Remember that? <laughs> yes, that's right. Yes. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> I don't want to talk. That's the past, Matt. It's time to move on. I got Heather. She's the gill of my life, and I'm going to wow. get her a ring. Well, we are, we are happy for you, Cranky. Yeah. We are, yep. are excited for you on your new next journey. And uh, Yeah, back to Wisconsin. Yep, and it, it'll be nice when I get back to fall bow fishing. You guys, if you got any 
want to know any tips. I, I, I wouldn't sit around yep. and eat cupcakes. I'd get to your boat and go bow fishing. Big, you're Bob right. Boat. Yep. Real good, Matthew. That's right, Cranky. That's right. Uh, that vegetation starts dying off a little yep. bit. Yep. Um, the waters clear up from algae oh, yeah. blooms and all yep. that stuff. That turnover and, and, happens. And the old carp really show up again. Really, really good, Cranky. Yeah, we'll start schooling up. I get to hang out with a lot of my buds. Yeah. But seems like every time they go towards the light, there they go. That's right. Mm-hmm. Up to the top. Yep. Up that the barrel true. tone. Yep. <laughs> yep. I love that song. <laughs> love that song. But yeah, everything's good. Watch the Olympics and good. was just wondering when they were gonna put bow fishing in there. I think you guys would do well. We'll have, we'll have to put to... a petition in for yes, that. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yep. That would be mm-hmm. fun. Hey Schmidt, did you sell your boat? I did sell my boat. Yes, oh. I did. Yep. Yep. Congrats. Well, thank Congrats. you. Yes, it was it was good. I, I appreciate you asking. <laughs> that was a very efficient boat. <laughs> it was. Yes, it was very efficient. Yes, it was. Yep. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> well, Cranky, we're going to let you get back to whining and dining. Heather, down there in Kentucky before you take your journey back north here. Yeah, I wanted to keep this one short. Just like I said, congrats to the Americans. And all uh, them young, great athletes out there that represented our country so well. Yeah, that's and, cool uh, that you like that. Mm-hmm. I do. I yep. do. I, I'm, I'm one of you guys. I mean, I know I'm a carp, but I'm uh, I'm a good old carp. I'll tell you. And Heather, she's going to turn my life around. Oh, wow. Good. Wow. Good. We are happy But I'm for telling you. you now, you shoot her, there will be no more cranky calling. Oh, man. I'll be, I'll be, I will mess with your boats when they're in the slips. Okay, <laughs> if we see you and Heather, um, we'll give you a free ride, buddy. Yeah. We'll give you a free She's ride. She's 42 pounds oh. on the scale, man. Oh, All right, cranky. Gonna... You better be careful if she comes up here and she's up here for the big 20. We're going to shoot her. We're still 42 shoot. pounds on the scale right now in the off season. She'll wow. plump up real nice in the spring, That She's going to be beautiful, and that's when I think we're going to tie the knot. Oh, but she okay. don't know that yet, and she doesn't. she doesn't have a shell phone. Available right now. I took it from her because of that whole Tinder thing. The oh. guys kept, 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 they kept buzzing all. I'm trying to make my moves. And do, do, do. I finally said, you got to get rid of that if you want to be with old Cranky. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yep. Hey, hey, one more thing, Matt. Did you, did you guys hear about the fish at the seafood restaurant? They had a fight down there. They had a, a big old fight at their seafood restaurant. Oh, that's not good. No. Oh, I didn't hear about that. No. All four fish were battered. <laughs> Oh my goodness! Really? Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. On that note, <laughs> well, Cranky, you have fun down there with Heather. Enjoy your time down there. Give us a call on your journeys back north to Wisconsin, buddy. I'm going to do that, Matt Smitty. Matt, everybody, congratulations on all the success on all the podium wins this year. And I'll talk to you soon. Heather's coming back now. I can. Oh, she's looking good, Matt. It's not ooh, time ooh, for ooh. another tidal wave. Okay. <laughs> Talk to you later. <laughs> yep, see you, Cranky. We'll see you, Cranky. <laughs> Bye. Oh, Cranky's living life, you know? Yes. Yeah. Yes. We are going to shoot Beverly or Heather. Or no, I, don't Heather. I don't care what her We put Beverly is. in the barrel already. If she's 42 pounds. We're going to shoot her. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> oh, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> yep. All right, yep. Shmitty. So before, oh, before right. we got Cranky calling in here, yes. I was going to tell you, I was out in the field last week, mm-hmm. and I was... Mowing my some of my paths out there. Okay. Like trails in the woods type yep. of deal. Yeah. Yep. And um, I had my AirPods, AirPods on. Okay. Now I was listening to some tunes. Really? And wow. I heard a song. This is so familiar to my situation. I heard I a in. song. Okay. So I downloaded it and I wanted to share it with you. Do you listen to Johnny Cash Radio 2 on Pandora? No, this oh. was not Johnny Cash. Oh, okay. Okay. No. Okay. No. And this you is, have the song to show me this right is a now? Different genre than oh. Johnny Cash. Yeah. Okay. I think you're going to like it, Schmitty. Are you ready? I'm I'm as ready as you I'm going to be. All right, Let's hear it. All right, here we go. Like that? Oh. Oh, baby. When I start back in the boat, oh, my oh boy, I'm not there to fish. I'm there to bow fish. <laughs> oh, oh, God. Yeah. That's oh, what I've been doing. I'm there to bow fish. <laughs> <laughs> I bow fish to the east, and I bow fish to the west, and I bow fish to the big buffs that I love the best. I mean, bow fishing. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. oh, my goodness. They talk about you. something, D. Schmitty. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What time of the day do you like to 
bow fish. Oh. Have you ever bow fished just before the sun came up? I have. Have you ever bow fished while the carp were spawning? Indeed, I have. Well, let me ask you this, D. Schmidt. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever been a BAA world champ? No. I don't think so. <laughs> Well, let me ask you this, D. Schmitty. <laughs> Have you ever shot a fish over 25 pounds? Yes. <laughs> I remember one time I shot a fish over 85 pounds, and the warden came and shined his light on me, and I said, I'm boat fishing. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's what I be doing. I be boat fishing. <laughs> it's catchy. It is. Because I boat fish to the east, and I boat fish to the west. And I bow fish to the big carp that I love the best. <laughs> I be bow fishing. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> That's what I be doing. Okay, Schmidt, here we Let go. Let me again. ask you something, D. Schmidt. Yeah? How long has it been since you shot a fish? Mm. Oh, it's been a while. <laughs> Did you shoot a carp yesterday? No. Did you shoot a gar? Last week. <laughs> did you shoot a big head last year? Oh, I did. You did? I did. Yeah. Or maybe it might be that you planning on shooting a fish tonight. That would be cool. That would be cool. But just oh, remember yeah. this part. When you start getting ready to bowfish, you might be raw, uninformed, unripe. You're a greenhorn. I'm your master. <laughs> That's right, Smitty. I'd be your bowfishing Yoda. Because <laughs> I bowfish to the east, and I bowfish to the west, and I bowfish to the fishies that I love the best. I'd be bowfishing. <laughs> now, when I started taking you to bowfishing tournaments, we didn't stop until the barrels were full. True, true. And I can always remember D. Schmitty falling asleep. <laughs> when we get back to the weigh-ins, we true. start calling his name. <laughs> We'd say, D. Schmitty, D. Schmitty, D. Schmitty, D. Schmitty. Wake up, D. Schmitty. <laughs> that was pretty good. <laughs> the other night, I oh. took D. Schmitty bow fishing. Yep, yep. Hmm. And it got so good. You know what Schmitty told me? Yep. Let me tell you what D. Schmitty told me. What I tell you? He said, shoot Matt Schillinger, because I can't hit crap. <laughs> if I can't shoot good enough, you might as well pick up my slack. Woo! I'd be both fishing. <laughs> I probably <laughs> said that to you. <laughs> I'd be both fishing. Oh, oh my yeah. gosh. I both fish to the east, and I both fish to the west, and I both fish to the big guard that I love the best. I'd be both fishing. I be both fishing. <laughs> I be both fishing. Oh yes, Smitty. One more here. I be both fishing. Here we go again. Jeez. Cause I both fish to the north. Oh. And I both fish to the south. Wow. I both fish everywhere. I even both fish in my sleep. I be both fishing. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I be doing, Smitty. Oh, I be both fishing. Gosh. <laughs> That I, I heard that. Matt, that wow. was actually well written. <laughs> That's a lot of work to get that timed up like that. It is. I do have yeah. one. <laughs> I've got one bone to pick here. <laughs> oh, no. What? My song was a good, genuine story. <laughs> this was like a diss track. This is just pointing out my flaws. <laughs> I'd like to fire. I'm your master. <laughs> I'll be your boat fishing Yoda. Yes, that was good. That was good. Wow. Oh. <laughs> wow. wow. That's going to be stuck in my head now. I got worked up over that. Wow. I uh, yeah. I don't know how we can continue. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how we can continue after that. Uh, that we lyrical take a masterpiece. commercial break, you Yeah. Okay, that's, that's, okay, that'll be good. Breath, you're cranky calling, and, and uh, I'd be bow fishing oh, song. A wild last 10 minutes. Wow, here. let's take a break, and then we'll get Randy Woodward to call. Okay, sounds good. <laughs> Are you looking to elevate your bow fishing brand with stunning design solutions? Look no further than End Designs. Their team of talented designers is dedicated to bringing your vision to life. 
Whether it's t-shirts, hats, leather products, eye-catching logos, to captivating boat wraps, they have you covered. Plus, with their commitment to excellence and attention to detail, you can trust that your project is in good hands. Don't settle for ordinary. Choose End Designs for extraordinary results. Visit their website today and let's bring your ideas to life. End Designs, where creativity meets excellence. Efficiency Bowfishing Lights by Outdoor Innovations USA. A color tone adjustable and dimmable light with a unique patented reflector design that puts more light where you need it. Efficiency Bowfishing Lights offer three different models. The 65 watt single color economy light, the 65 watt efficiency V2 tricolor dimmable light for maximum efficiency and versatility, and the 130 watt efficiency maximus, designed to be an all out beast of a bowfishing light. Efficiency, designed and built by bowfishermen for bowfishermen. Check them out at OutdoorInnovationsUSA.com. All right, welcome back, everyone, from our short little commercial break. Uh, Matt, Yeah. now it is time for... <laughs> Can you feel the tension in the air right now? It's time for BAA Records. Yes, back at it again, wow. BAA Records wow. here. Um, I'll tell you what, <clears throat> I'm going to need a drink of water before yes, I read will. this one here. <laughs> <laughs> Dustin Meisel. Back at it again. Have we ever said his name on the uh, podcast before? It doesn't really ring a bell. Maybe once or twice. Maybe once or twice, yeah. <laughs> Dustin Meisel, back at it again, racking up a bunch of BAA records. Here we go, yeah. guys. Alabama State and world record permit at one pound, 15.9 ounces. Alabama State and world record electric ray at three pounds, 14 ounces. Alabama State and world record southern puffer at 11.9 ounces. Ooh. And a Florida state record blacktail red horse at 14 ounces. That is four records since we had our last podcast. Ain't messing around. Nice shooting dust. Yeah. Yep. Congratulations to Briar Brown on his BAA Kansas state record, Big Head, weighing in at 13 pounds, 12.8 ounces. Wow. Over there in I'm Kansas. Gonna, uh, I'm just going to take a wild guess what they're That's one of the first big heads. Yeah. I mean, at uh, that weight? Kansas. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to take a guess and say that's the first one right there. For Interesting. Kansas. Yes, yeah. Yep. All right, man, let's go east of Virginia. Yes. Congratulations to Colin Laster on his new BAA state record with... <laughs> <laughs> Congrats to Colin Laster on his BAA state record goldfish <laughs> that weighed in at four pounds, 12.8 ounces. Congrats to Colin. Nice. Yeah, whatever. Good nice. job. <laughs> Moving on to Chris Boston on his BAA Virginia State record grass carp, weighing in at 33 pounds, 9.6 ounces. That's awesome. How about this, Matt? Wow. Brody Brossman. Yes, sir. We, Corey's son. Mm -hmm. We were shooting with him this year. That was the first time I got to to spend some time with right. him. We went down, shot here in southern shot Wisconsin. Shot a 32 pound common here. Yes. Yes. He and shot two third, big yeah, fish. two 30 pounders in one night. Yeah. 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 He wanted to break what 30 was his goal. Yeah. He shot a 30, whatever, and then he broke it a couple hours right. later. Hell right. of a night for Brody yeah. there. Yep. But how about Brody here with a nice little pile of BAA youth records, starting out with a quillback carp sucker, Ohio youth record at 6.8 pounds. Mm -hmm. His gizzard shad from Ohio is a youth record at two pounds. Freshwater drum, Ohio youth record at 1.8 pounds. And his mullet, for an adult and youth yes. state record in Delaware wow. at 3.8 pounds. Brody, oh, nice shooting, brother. That's, That's amazing. Right. Good job, Brody. Uh, congratulations to Corbin Stratton on his new BA Ohio youth record, Freshwater Drum, weighing in at 5.8 pounds. Nice. Nice shooting to Corbin. Yeah. There. Yep. Uh, yeah, yep. congrats to all the BAA records that we just had Big there. Round of applause. Absolutely. Great Absolutely. job, everybody out there. Way to be on the water because when we can get those records, if you're in the water, you gotta go shoot. shooting on fish, Mitty. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna tell you what, Matt. I think it's yes. time for the meat and potatoes of this podcast. Yes, sir. -y. Let's give Randy Woodward a call. Here we go. See what Randy's up to today. Yep. Hey, hello. Hey, Randy. This is Matthew and Derek calling from the Bow Fishing Buzz. How are you doing today? And thank you for joining us. Yeah. Hey, Randy. Doing great. How y'all doing? Oh, uh, we can't complain, Randy. The sun is shining. It's in the 80 degrees today. Beautiful day here in Wisconsin. Yeah. What's the weather like in Oklahoma? Uh, I think we're going to have a heat index of 109. Today. Oh, oh, my goodness. Jeez, that's <laughs> terrible. <Wow. laughs> I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
I mean, that's a yeah, that's it's a, gonna be bad. Wow, that's a <laughs> perfect time to be. You should be on the water right now at oh. high noon <laughs> in the back bays, <laughs> shooting some buffs. <laughs> <laughs> is is that average temperature down there this time of year, Randy? Well, that's uh, we had some rain the other day, and that little bit of rain will cause the heat index to go oh, way sure. up. Sure. So, wow. Yep. Yep. Oh, exactly. Hmm. Well, you know, Randy. So usually, it's in the nineties. So. Wow, that's warm. Wow. You yeah. get you get a lot of bad storms in your area, Randy. There in Oklahoma. We haven't had this year. No. Okay. You know, early in the year, we have a lot of tornadoes. Yep. But most of them are west of us. Okay. Thank goodness. Gotcha. Yeah, that's a good thing because we've had a lot of nasty storms. Yeah, we have. This early season here and stuff. It's been crazy with a lot of big tornadoes and mm-hmm. stuff. A lot of rainfall here. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, Randy, talking about you coming on our podcast here today, we're letting our listeners know who is coming on. Yeah. And um, I'm going to brag on you, Randy, because you don't do a lot of boasting and, and, and bragging. But you deserve it because you do a ton of stuff in the bow fishing world. Um, I consider you one of the legends in bow fishing, Randy. And I think some of the things that you have done are just amazing. And I look up to you. I respect you a lot. And I'm going to brag up on you here today, Randy, because like I said, I was trying to find some bow fishing pictures to put on our YouTube video podcast. And you hardly have anything out there with you bow fishing wise. It's all kids. It's all your your yep. grandkids. It's all your your lady bow fishers out there, um, but but you do so much, Randy. That everything that you do is just is incredible. And I want our listeners to hear some of your stories, Randy, of of bow fishing and what you do. Because you know, I don't think because you don't do a lot of bragging, you're not out there posting a lot of pictures and stuff. Flying under the radar. Kind of like yeah. that, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I don't think a lot of the youth that are in the sport, unless they're down there shooting the tournaments, other than that, they really don't know who Randy is. And that's why I wanted to have you on today, Randy, so people can hear who you are, what you do, how long you've been doing it, and the great things that you do for bow fishing. So thanks for joining us today, Randy. No problem. Yep. I appreciate it. You bet. Um one thing that I really want to know, Randy, is how you got into the sport. And I'm really curious on the person that introduced you to the sport of bow fishing uh, because they have no idea what they did. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and, and what was the first fish that you shot, Randy? First fish I ever killed was a long nose gar. Okay. And I've okay. been in love with them ever since. <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome that's awesome so so and i was waiting and shot it with a recurve so there was no compounds back then and i shot it with a wooden arrow no oh kidding my a field arrow wow so then you had to go so, chase your arrow then you have to chase it down because yep, they yep. can't get rid of that arrow and it finally floats them up so. <laughs> that is that's crazy so you're out waiting your first fish you shoot is a guy yep my With, dad was the one that took he took me out, and uh, we dad. we used to go wading all every spring, you know. Really? And yes. Oh, so do you and remember? It like, ended up being hunting, like like rabbit hunting. You had to hunt fish the same way because you're in bushes and stuff, you know. Oh, hmm. cool. Do you remember roughly what year that was, Randy? When your dad introduced you to the sport of bull fishing? I was about six years old. That was wow. in the sixties. Wow, that's awesome. Cool. That's that's, cool. that's. I mean, that's not a lot of people were doing it. So then. yeah, that's what I'm there gonna was, say. There was no, there was no bow fishing reels. There was nothing like that. We, right. the first reel we made was a Folgers coffee can with a bolt in it. When mm-hmm. we first come out with bare archery and put a, you know, the stabilizer, yep, uh, deal in the bow, mm-hmm. we we used a Folgers can and and wrap line around it. Wow, that's really cool. Yeah, that's, that's neat. That's really cool. That's neat. That's cool. Um, let me ask you this, Randy. While we're on the topic of you know firsts here, do you remember your first bow fishing tournament? What was that like? What year? What year was that tournament in? Okay, Sports of Field and Outdoor Life come out with bow fishing articles about. I mean, way way back there in the seventies. Okay, that's how you found out about tournaments. Oh. We went to our first one in like nineteen seventy eight, seventy nine, down at Waco, Texas, at Lake Belton. Oh wow! No kidding. Yes, and uh, we had a little 
the little lights you buy at Walmart, the, the, the 12 volt lights, we had them on the front of our boat. And uh, wow. a trolling motor that was like 40 pound truck. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. Wow. And uh, I won big fish that night oh. with a 30 pound buffalo. Oh, no nice. Kidding. Yeah. And we come in 15th. And that's when we figured out we might be able to hang with some of these guys <laughs> that you, know, you see in the magazines and stuff. Yeah. How many, how many teams were in that tournament, Randy? There was uh, 89 teams, I oh believe, in the first one. I God, that actually blows my mind that there was that many. Yeah, I, was, I was expecting like a dozen yeah. or nine or so. Yeah. Holy cow. Now, Texas probably was the the pillar of bow fishing tournaments at the time, but you could not get one of them guys to come out of the state of Texas. Oh, really? Uh, they oh. would hunt in Texas. Wow. But huh. that's where we had to go to get into the elite competition. That's that cool. year – Later that year, the LSBA had a tournament on Sam Rayburn, and we went there, and there was 209 teams. Holy cow. And we That's played crazy. third place. 200? What? And you took third place. Oh, my gosh. And we, yeah. What was the entry fee, Randy? Back then, it was like 40 bucks. 40 bucks That's for a crazy. team. And what was, uh, what was your typical format for a tournament? Like, was it a, a big it numbers, numbers, or it was numbers? Yeah, numbers. it was numbers. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it was $40. Was that for, did it matter how many people were in the boat, Randy, or generally no, were there two? No, it was two? a two-man team. A two-man two, oh, team. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. Wow. Very interesting. It wow. was two-man teams until like 96 or something like that. Wow. Hmm. So that's, that's when they finally, no, I'm sorry, it was two-man teams until around 2000. Oh, wow. On the, so, so, so Randy, the AA, when it started, it, it was two-man teams. Okay. That's interesting. Yeah, that's cool. It that's is. That's cool. So, Randy, I want you to take me back. You're reading the Field and Stream. You see an article in there about a bow fishing tournament in Texas. All right? Yep. You and your buddy decide you're going to shoot in this, so you load everything up and you head over into Texas. What was going through your mind? What were you thinking? And what was the atmosphere like when you got there? Because... I was not expecting you to say that many teams. You know, what were were, yeah. you, were you intimidated? Were you kind of like, oh my gosh, this is out of our league? Or, or right. how, and how old were you, Randy? So, kind of take me through the process of when you went to your first one. I was uh, I was nineteen years old okay. when we went to that. We seen it in sports or field and <laughs> outdoor life. Both had it, and uh, they had all the team, all the tournaments listed. Which is Lake Seminole in Georgia was the first bow fishing tournament ever in the United States. Oh, that's cool. That it was just too far to go to, you know? Yeah. So we went to Texas and we drove down on a Thursday and scouted Thursday night late and then Friday and Friday night with hardly any sleep. We slept in our truck. Huh. And we, that's when we found out how much hotter Texas was than Oklahoma. <laughs> 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 but, uh, we got the we got the guidelines on the tournament and it, you know it showed the fish and it said gas for goose and I I go what the heck is a gas for goose I've yeah. never heard of that yeah so we go out on the tournament and like you said we were intimidated because they was we had a fiberglass boat everybody else had flat bottoms and we even had a guy you know, I'm friends with now Mr Kidwell he told me he said you shouldn't have brought that boat we're gonna kick you out here really and. Uh, we placed in front of him that tournament. Oh, there awesome. you go. That's awesome. That's <laughs> awesome. Yes. But, uh, but we went out and shot, and right at daylight, we got into a bunch of drum. We, what, the drum wasn't listed. Oh. So we come back in, and we parked, and I told my brother-in-law, I said, I'm going to walk up through here and look at these fish. So we walked up, I walked up through there, and I seen a drum in a barrel, and I go, what is that right there? And they go, that's a Gasper goose. Oh, Gasper goose. And I said, Cool. So I went back, and we had about 15 of them. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's awesome. I've never heard him reference to that before. Me neither. Never heard huh. that. we got to call him that from here back, on. Yeah, back then, you'd see on the rivers, it'd say goo for sale. And I always wondered what, you know, down Trendy River, what is a goo, you know? Oh, my gosh. Wow. That, that is funny. That's cool. Like I said, History. We killed a 30 pound buffalo that night and one big fish and a $200 and a bow. And we thought we was on top oh of the goodness. world. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. First, cool. first place was like $500 in that tournament. Oh, wow. Kidding. 209 boats in first place was, or is this the one that had 89 boats in it, Randy? 
89. Okay, gotcha. Points. Even still, that's wild. What, what? So when when you get there, Randy, on tournament day, uh, you 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 park. Um, what was the atmosphere like compared to nowadays? You know, what was it like on your big tournaments nowadays? Were 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 you, were people willing to share information, or were they pretty tight lipped as well back then? Or you know, what was the atmosphere like, Randy? Well. They lie just like they do now. <laughs> okay, gotcha. That hasn't changed. All right. Yep. Yep. <laughs> you know, you know, I hunted with Alan Yater here a while back, and we won a world championship together. And people come up and ask me how many we could kill, or if we seen a lot of fish, and I tell them the truth. And Alan looked at me one day, and he said, "Bro, what do you do that for?" And I go, "Because they don't believe me anyway." <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> you know? true. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That is true. <laughs> yep. 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 <laughs> That's cool. That is really neat. Let me ask you this, Randy. So was that your biggest tournament win, that one that you shot there with that 89 teams, or is there another one that sticks out that you guys had a, you know, you placed very well? We won the LSBA state championship on Sam Rayburn about three years later. Okay. And there was 280-something teams on. Wow. I I can't wrap my head around that number. That's insane. When we hear about a 100-team tournament now, that's huge. Right. Well, wow. you think about it, a hundred team tournament now, that's four people for both. That's true. You divide those up by two Back and then, you're doubling your two. teams. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. True. Yep. Wow. That's and cool. plus the tournaments back then were daytime and nighttime. Okay. Oh. They wasn't just just one. Sure. You started at seven, you went to three. Then you come in and weighed in, then you went back at six and come in at eight. Oh wow, oh, that's kind of neat. Interesting. Huh. Interesting. So this this Sam Rayburn tournament that you were shooting, Randy, what what did you win for winning that tournament with two hundred some odd teams in it? We won two thousand dollars. Oh, that nice. That's that not bad at all. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Wow. Yep. Wow. Hmm. Now I'm assuming not on this question here, Randy, but I just have to ask: trailering tournament or was it one launch and one body of water? One launch, one body of water. Holy That's cow. the way the tournaments were until plumb up to two thousand something. Wow, I can't imagine how long did it oh take gosh. for two hundred and eighty boats to launch. <laughs> well, what they do, they split them out there, and they would call the first ten and let them go, and then as soon as they basically the water leveled out, they'd let the next ten go, and it wow. went pretty good. I mean, no kidding. That's that's cool. To to that's that, what that used to be like. It is. My, but my gosh, did you have any spots to yourself with that yeah. many boats on that water? <laughs> were, you, were you sharing a lot of water? I, I tell you what, you learn to hunt pressured fish just like you learn to hunt pressured deer on public hunting. Okay. You learn to hunt pressured fish, and that's what I became very good at. That's very interesting. Very interesting. Yeah. You know, I, I would hunt things that other people wouldn't even look at. You know, yes. they'd look at big old rocks, and they'd say, well, there ain't going to be no bank on there. But when you start pushing these little gar around, then along them rocks, they're floating. Or the little buffalo are sucking on them or something. Mm-hmm. That's the only place they're not getting hammered, you know. Sure. Yep. Wow. Yep. Wow. That's crazy. So you... But 90% of the people only scouted on Friday night on them tournaments. You didn't have everybody on there for a week. Sure. You know. Putting a ton of pressure on them, running them over, pushing them to deep water. Yeah. Yes. I. Yeah, that makes them. A... I always wish that – Scoting would not happen. <laughs> sure. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, I've seen what it's done in tournaments, mm-hmm. and it's just, it, it kind of makes it terrible when it comes yeah. to tournament night. Yeah. You know? Yeah. 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 Once I get boat tracks over them over and over and over, even though they're not shooting, exactly. fish aren't stupid, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. I always told people that people that don't bow fish that live on, for example, here in Wisconsin on the Big Old Plain Flowage. Yeah. They're like, hey, you got to come out here and shoot these fish. These carp are stupid. Right. They're not. They're not stupid. No. no. Trust me. Yep. No. <laughs> they're not stupid. Yep. Yep. <laughs> they see a couple during the day off the end of their dock, and they think that they're just everywhere right. flopping around, and yeah. that's not the case. Now try to sneak up on them yeah. during the daytime when he's feeding and try to stick an arrow into Right. Him. Right. Yeah. They're not dumb. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Jeez. Well, that's, that's let really... me tell you about a tournament we done last weekend. We're helping our wildlife department because we had to fight for our rights. Okay? Yep. And the, the commission stood with us and did not put in the 10 fish law. So our wildlife department went and tagged like 1,000, 1,100 fish the other day in a little bitty lake at Sand Spring, Shell Lake. They invited five teams Friday, five teams Saturday. I was on the Saturday day. 
But the biologist wanted to get in my boat, so he got in my buddy's boat on Friday. They went out, and those five teams killed 1,100 fish. Oh, my. And now how many? Lake, 1,100 pounds of fish. I'm sorry. Okay, okay but, gotcha. The five teams killed 1,100 pounds of fish on this little bitty lake. Okay, you control that lake in two hours. Wow. Oh, okay. Wow. Uh, we went on, they went on Friday and killed 1,100 pounds. We went on Saturday and luckily uh, the same biologist got in the boat with me that was in my buddy's boat. And he said, man, last night there was fish everywhere. And I go, yeah, this lake has never been open to nighttime fishing period and illegal to bow fish in. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're helping them do their survey. Yep. They, they tatted like 1,100 fish tagged. We killed 13 fish. Saturday night, and there was 17 fish killed Friday night that was tagged. That's 30 fish. That's only 3%. Wow. That's crazy. So, that's very cool analytics to hear. But the biologists yeah. learned that from Friday night to Saturday night how spooky those fish can get. Right, they yeah. were boiling out, taking off. Friday And Friday night, they was just laying there. Wow. Absolutely. And they've never been bullfish before, too. It took one and night for them. they've never been bullfish. Yeah. Yeah. One, one night, night for them to get that spooky. Wow. Yeah, That's very they, cool. They was like six, 600 pounds killed on Saturday night. Okay. Jeez. Okay. <laughs> mm. That is really cool. That is interesting to know that. Mm -hmm. It doesn't take much. Not at all. Even on totally no. unpressured fish. Yep. <laughs> yep. Exactly. <laughs> now, I want to brag on you right now, Randy. Um, How many BAA World Champs belts or plaques do you have? I've won six BAA wow. World Championships and oh two na gosh. daytime national championships. Wow. Michael Jordan. Michael. Oh, my goodness. How cool is that, Hush yeah, Mitty? That is awesome. That's yeah. that's crazy. That's why I said I want to brag on him a little bit because he, Randy just kind of, you know, he doesn't yes, boast yes. about that stuff yep. too much, but that's impressive wow. as heck. Oh, that's insane. That's yeah. insane. Where were those tournaments, Randy? Uh, Gunners, Alabama was was our first one okay. that we won and uh, another one in Alabama and we won two in Louisiana. I guess we won three in uh, Alabama, two in Louisiana. And uh, I don't remember where the last one was. Oh, the first one, the first one, first year of the BAA, there was no world championship, but there was a world champion. Okay. What it was, they went off the tournaments you won. Gotcha. Okay. Mm -hmm. We won, we won the, uh, Six tournaments that year, and Danny and Bob, Danny Nichols and Bob Brown won six tournaments. But our tournaments that we won had more people in them. Oh. We won the Louisiana or the LSBA tournament with two hundred and something teams, and their tournaments they won had 70, 80 teams. So okay. it went to a vote, and then both of our teams had won two tournaments in one night at local clubs. They won two tournaments in one night. We won two tournaments in one night. We we fit, both fished two tournaments, oh. went and shot one deal and turned into our fish to two different tournaments. Oh my! Gosh. Oh my God! That's in, wow! That's committed sure. right there. Yeah. Wow. Sure. We both do, we both done that, and then it went to the board, and we was voted the champions in nineteen ninety. No kidding! And they wow. was they was voted second, and nineteen ninety one was the first tournament. Wow, that's so. crazy! You know, you you uh, when you have a hard time remembering how where your championships for one that means you have a lot of yeah, them that's yeah. awesome that's cool i mean just think about that how impressive that is that's insane you know? yeah and and shooting against that many teams yeah yeah you know yeah wow yeah that's, that's really awesome cool. that's, that's, really really that's really cool, cool. randy and congratulations all, and, on that and 90 was and all and most of them was on the same water with those teams that's what i'm more proud of yeah today yep right i mean right. sure we, we we won in 2008 on louisiana but you could trailer but, uh, I mean, it's still in the marsh, but they could drive three hours if they wanted to. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Yes. Know, I call yep. them, I call them run and hide tournaments. I don't, <laughs> I, I'll shoot them, but I don't really like them. Okay. Yes. Yep. Right. Yep. So. I know that's, um, that's how a lot of the guys that shot years ago want to leave from one boat launch. They want to shoot on one yeah. body of water. You sure. know, yeah. they want that. Yeah. Uh, because you find your true champion. Right. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah, I hear you. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. 
So, so that you, you see that a lot, you know, you, yep. you see that a lot. Yep. Um, so, so Randy, we're going to, we're going to slide away from tournaments now and what you were okay. doing in tournaments. Now we're going to slide into what you're doing after you were shooting in a lot of tournaments. You kind of became a voice for the Bovis community along with getting the youth worlds going. And then also the, the ladies Bovis championship. Um, how long have you been doing that, and why did you want to do that type of stuff? Well, the voice deal started in the BAA. See, Arkansas couldn't hunt at night when we started the tournaments. Okay. We went and fought with Arkansas and went to their meetings and stuff and finally got them to agree to do a night, let us do a nighttime deal. So right. we had a nighttime tournament in Arkansas which we got checked three times that night by game rangers. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and one of them actually told us he hates us. Did oh. not want us there. Really? But the re- the reason for that is cuz he was afraid that we they was going to get calls all night long where he had to go out and check people. Mhm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. We had the tournament had nobody do anything illegal. Everything was great. And when it went to a vote that spring, they voted it in for Arkansas. Awesome. Okay. So that's one of our biggest accomplishments. Yep. And then in Alabama, they took our Gator Gar away from it. Yep. And David Frazier and Jimi Hendrix got on that ball. And the night of the tournament, the World Championship in 1992, when me and Lance won it, that was the last night you could shoot Gator Gar in Alabama that year. Wow. But before that year was up, they had went to enough senators and stuff and got it reinstated with a one fish limit, you know. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. they took it completely away from us. And just like, you know, of Oklahoma, they tried to put a 10 fish limit on us last year. Correct. They called about five of us to come in and try to agree to a limit that we would not agree. It went to the open meeting and they try, still tried to do it, would not agree. And then it went to the wildlife commissioners. So we went to the commissioner's meeting, which most people don't ever do, but we did it. And when we went to that meeting, they was four of us got up and talked and they asked us questions. And I told them, all we want is science proof that you need to put a limit on these fish. And the wildlife commission, thank God, they went along with us. And now we're helping the wildlife department do their studies and, uh, that was part of it the other day, and they've been coming and getting our fish at every tournament. That's <laughs> wow. So, yep. so it, I feel like it's going real well for us right now on that. That's our biggest deal right now. That's that's good. That's yeah, that's that. awesome. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But on the youth worlds in 2004, yeah. we had uh, the world championship, which uh, Oklahoma Fish Stickers hosted it and put it in Texas. Why I don't know. I scratch my head still today <laughs> over that. We was in Texoma, but we was on Texas side. We couldn't even claim it was on Oklahoma side. But we went. I went to the meeting, and the president of the BAA, I stood up and asked him, can we do a Youth Worlds Championship next year? And he looked right at me and said no. Oh. And, and I almost quit the BAA over that. Wow. Okay, but I didn't. And I, I looked at him and told him, well, there's going to be a tournament next year. So in 2005, we, we had the tournament, had it in outdoor life, sports of field, everything. Well, next thing I know, I get hit by PETA. They're coming down here to protest our tournament. They started out in Oklahoma City. Oh. I didn't even know they was there and on the news doing it. Well, Brandon Tabor calls me and said, do you want me to go talk with them on, you know, do an interview? And I said, yes, go for it. I ain't got time for this. So I was expecting 40 kids our first year. And because of PETA went to Oklahoma City and then came to Tulsa, we had about, we had 82 kids, 82 wow. or 83. I can't wow. remember. Wow. Doubled but, what you uh, thought. Mm-hmm. Doubled what we thought. Mm-hmm. And then we, uh, we had a tournament and, and I handed every lady that came a ticket and we had an NWTF print there. We knew the lady from the PETA was there, her and her husband. I even gave her a ticket. She won the dang picture and took it. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But wow. what they didn't know is they had a wildlife official or a highway patrolman unmarked around them the whole time because the year before in Nebraska pheasant hunt, they uh, 
they was there and one of the PETA people threw fake blood on a kid. And I told them, if they do that at my tournament, these rednecks will kill them. Yeah. So they had, we had plenty of police there. And this split, this officer walked over to the game ranger. He was undercover. He goes, Randy, you ain't going to believe this. And I go, what's that? He goes, she just turned around to her husband and said, look at this. There ain't no kids crying. They're all having fun. And, uh, Everything's going good. Wow. And he couldn't believe that she said that. Well, then two weeks later, her and her husband gets arrested in New York for dumping dogs. They went, they went and got these dogs and had them euthanized. You know, people thought they was giving them them dogs and they had to take care of them. Oh, my gosh. Well, they, they was euthanizing them, putting them in the same dumpster, and they screwed up and done it three months in a row. So they arrested them on the third month. Wow. wow. Right after RD. Nice. Nice. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Really stay. They, they really stand for what they believe in, don't they? Jeez. Yeah. That's terrible. Yeah. I found to come back and bid them on that. It deal. did. Yeah. It did. Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's wild. Wow. Well, Randy, you kind of just brought up there about that the youth shooting there. That's very cool. Um, you know, the next generation of bullfishers is very important to you. It's very important to us. We always say the most important generation is the next generation to keep bullfishing going. Um, how did the Youth Bullfishing Championship get started, and why did you want to do that? Well, I went I went to a PABA shoot up in Minnesota, and they involved kids. I took my son up there, and me and Terrence and him, and then his boy went with another team. And we won first place in that tournament, and then my son won first place in the tournament on his side, you know, which he was out there wading with me. In that cold water y'all got. <laughs> yep. Uh-huh. Yep. But uh, we was killing them big old carp. Yeah. And I and I I was more proud of him than I was us. And that's when it went from me, you know, doing everything for me yep. to doing everything for we. Oh, and that's mm-hmm. what I try to tell people today. Mm-hmm. And that's that's when I started the youth world was that year. That's the year that was two thousand four when I asked them to do it and they wouldn't do it so you know mm-hmm. it's where it all started from and i've loved every minute of it. i've created a monster yeah you know yeah that uh yeah. we have to have a banquet now just to cover our tournament it takes around twenty thousand to do our tournament oh my gosh so, oh my gosh. you know time we pay for t-shirts that's six thousand dollars you know five six thousand dollars for t-shirts because we give out Anywhere from four to five hundred T-shirts. Wow! At a tournament, and nothing costs the kid. Not, you know, there's no price for anything we do. Yep. Let me back up just a little bit. We started a tank that we take the hunting shows. Right. We started it four years before the youth world was ever started. We was going to hunting shows teaching kids bow fishing with rubber tips on the arrows. <laughs> Eighteen years ago, we quit counting when we went over a hundred thousand kids on that. Wow, tank. that's crazy. We, that's amazing. We wore out two tanks. Oh my oh. gosh! Oh, yeah. Wow. You know, and, and we still still do that today. That, that's that's just incredible. It everything is. that you do for the youth and how long you've been doing it. Yeah. Um, and one thing about your your tournament there is, you've got food, you've got ice cream vendors there. Oh. You've got 3D archery shooting. Um, you have all these volunteers helping out. The, the families come there. I came down there, I believe it was 2011, Randy, uh, yep. for, your, for your youth uh, championship down there. And the kids, it was, I think there was like close to 400 kids there. Wow. And I remember yep. throwing shirts to these kids, and they were in a big circle all around me, and they were hooting and hollering and yelling, throw me a shirt, throw me a shirt. <laughs> It yeah. was it was so fun. That's cool. And to see, like you said, what you created down there was just. And I remember, oh my god, it was so hot down there. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was hot. <laughs> but I remember thinking, my goodness, look at this. This is this is incredible of what you started. Yeah, yeah. And it's so special because One man's vision. The smiles that you have put on kids' faces throughout all these years is incredible. It's amazing. It's it's just crazy. And I can imagine some of these kids are still bow fishing now, and they're probably coming to take kids out themselves. They're right. probably shooting in tournaments now themselves. They're probably been yeah. champions Taking their own kids out. That you have yeah. started, yeah. Randy, yeah. you know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I went to the Open in Missouri a couple years ago, mm-hmm. 
and they was three kids there with youth boat fishing shirt shooting in the open. Oh, oh no wow. kidding. Wow, that's cool. Full circle. Yeah. They, you talk about you talk about make a guy smile. Absolutely. And everyone I'm trying to give me a hug, you know. Oh, that is wow. cool. That is awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> that's incredible. So you've been hosting the youth worlds for over twenty years. Yep. Then you decide you want more work to do, Randy. So I'm going to start the ladies' <laughs> bow fishing championship. When did that start? <laughs> yeah, four years ago I started the lady. Okay. I had a lady tell tell me it's a tournament. She goes, "Well, I wish I wish we had a tournament for us." <laughs> well, then I got a granddaughter that was aging out of the youth world, and she said the same thing. So I basically started for them, and we had it two weeks ago. Hmm. We had our uh, I told the ladies, I go, you know, I love doing this tournament, but I can't put my heart into it like I can the youth. I hate asking, like you, you always donate to the youth. Mm-hmm. And I hate asking y'all for two different donations, you know, because I feel like a bum doing that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and and I told the ladies, I said, if y'all want this to grow, you, this group right here needs to be the core to start making it grow. So right. a lot of them told me before they left, said, we will help you get this going. That's awesome. So, that's really cool. That's really cool. Hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. Very mm-hmm. cool. Mm-hmm. So let me ask you this, Randy, more on a personal note here. What is your favorite fish to target, and what is the biggest fish that you've ever shot over these years of bow fishing? Okay. Gar is my favorite fish, okay. period. But the, but the alligator gar is like a Boone and Crockett buck. Mm, okay. I don't care if he's 30 pounds or 180 pounds or 200 pounds. That is the typical big fish of the United States right there. Mm-hmm. I love shooting rolling gar. I don't, you know, I'll shoot them laying. I've been on the spawn and stuff, and they can't get away from you on the spawn. If you yep. do, I mean, if you're quiet and you get up there, they're just laying there. Yep. Right. But I love to shoot them rolling. Oh, the yeah. biggest one I've ever killed by myself was like 154 pounds. Oh. But then me and Hoopy and Jeff Beal killed a uh, – 180 something pounds oh on a gosh. tournament. Wow. Oh my gosh. You know, <laughs> that's crazy. But, wow. That'd be, and a- I, September, I'm getting ready to go. I hadn't even got to hunt them this year. I'm about to have withdrawals, but I'm going to September 2nd heading to Texas. So. Cool. That's awesome. Heck that's yeah. cool. That's Heck a big, yeah. that's one big fish. Good Lord. Mm-hmm. Oh. Mm-hmm. Yes. I'm sure you have many, Randy. Do you remember one specific favorite bow fishing memory? Yeah, and everybody's going to think I'm nuts because it's not the world championship. I took my grandson. I went to Texoma for the Texas State Championship. And I went down there and scouted for two days, seen a lot of people scouting. And there was like 40 teams in this tournament, 30 to 40. And I scouted the Everybody thought I was crazy because I was scouting the opposite side of the lake on the rough side. But what they didn't realize, the weather was supposed to change out of the north real strong, the wind. And it did. It flew 40 mile an hour on the day of the tournament. But I took my grandson, my son, and a friend of ours, Casey Jones, and we hunted that tournament. And we go down there, and uh, I've never, I hardly ever win a door prize. If I do, I just turn around and give it to a kid. Mm-hmm. Well, I won an O-Night of Bow. Oh, wow. And I turned around, handed it to my grandson. They had the drawing before the tournament. And uh, I handed it to my grandson, and here's you a new bow, buddy. <laughs> and uh, all the women there was going, aw. And then my son goes, you're the luckiest son of a gun. And he got the next bow. He oh, the my AMS gosh. Bow. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and I told him right then, I said, we can leave right now. We've done pretty good. I mean, we don't even have to go to the tournament. And we go out on the tournament, the big 20. And I told them, I go, everybody's going to kill 200 pounds because there's 10-pound buffalo everywhere. I go, but it's going to be whoever finds a couple gar or grass carp. And we got into some gar that was spawning behind a railroad trestle because the wind was blowing around it and making the current. Well, they were spawning. And we come in and with 460-something pounds. Oh, my gosh. It's like 203. Holy oh. cow. <laughs> so we won a tournament, and I told my grandson, I think he was like nine. I told him, I said, well, you're probably the youngest to ever win an adult tournament, and I'm probably the oldest. You know? <laughs> oh, that's cool. <laughs> yeah. Now, how but cool that is was, that? 
Yeah, that was my favorite memory. And then we got a plaque. We didn't know we was going to get them, but they sent all four of us the plaque with our names reversed. So he even got a plaque out of the deal, which I'd made him a big picture and stuff. So. I mean, cool. Uh, so so you, you won that tournament with your grandson and your son. Right. That's, right. that's awesome. That's really neat. That's crazy. That's, that's what really dreams cool. are made of right Absolutely. there. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Well, for <clears throat> everybody that has ever gotten a a – message or um you you posted something on somebody's timeline on facebook you've all seen the randy woodward signature that he always mm. ends his little lines his with comment yep. his little comment there in yep. every one of your comments you end it i don't care if you write a hundred a day you're, you're you're ending it this way for better yeah, outdoors sir. take a kid hunting and fishing it's our future what does that mean to you randy yep. Well, I started that way before the internet ever came out. Really? In these hunting shows. Yep. You know, when I was in the Coweta Bow Hunters, I always signed off like that. Okay. And I've kept that going all these years. And what's funny is now you see some of these hunting shows, and they have little quotes like that. Sure. Yep. And I've even had people tell me they've seen your deal, and they made their <laughs> own. And I said, well, that's cool. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yep. yep. But, but yeah, I always put for better outdoors, take a kid hunting and fishing. Yep. It's our future. And, and you say that every single, when you end a comment on that's social cool. media. Yeah. That is really Well, that's cool. even when I send a message to you. Yes. You know? yeah. Oh, oh, really? Exactly. A text message yes. even. Oh, yeah. Wow. That's yep. dedication yeah. right there. <laughs> wow. Yep. That is. That's dedication to the youth and to the sport. Yep. And what that means to, to the Randy. future. To the future. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. That is really cool. Well, Randy... We can't thank you enough for joining yeah. us today on the Bowfish and Buzz podcast. Very informative. Absolutely. I, I, like I said, I wanted to brag about you and, and talk about you because some of the things that you have done are incredible. Six-time BA World Champ, Youth World Championship for over 20 years, started up the Ladies Championship here a couple of four years ago, and, and your, your voice in the Bowfish community has, has definitely impacted a lot of bowfishers. Oh, yeah. For sure. Yeah. Like I said, I consider you one of the legends. And boy, I really would love to share the deck with you sometime on a bow fishing trip, Randy. <laughs> well, Bubba, you're on my bucket list on that. I promise you that. <laughs> we need we need to do that because I think we'd have a we'd have a good time and just to hear some of your stories and then to be able to bow fish with you, I think yeah. would be a tremendous honor. That would be awesome. And um, like I said, I can't thank you enough for for joining us, and I hope our listeners really appreciated this podcast here to, to learn about Randy Woodward if you didn't know about him and what he all does. So thank you, Randy, for joining us. We really appreciate it. Thank you, Randy. No problem. I've, I enjoyed it, guys. I didn't – you know, I'm not an electronic person, and when you asked me that, I didn't even know what this was. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'll send you a link to it when I get done uploading it, Randy, so you can listen to it. Okay, man. Yep. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Randy. And you have yourself a good day and the rest of a good week here, Randy. Thanks, Randy. Okay. Bye-bye. Uh -huh. That was really cool. Yeah. That was really cool. And, Matt, I would oh, I would kill to see some pictures of what I, these 1970s oh, tournaments looked like with almost 300 <laughs> people or 300 boats. Yeah. That's insane. Yeah. That's yeah. insane. Yeah. And I know he said it went smooth with groups of 10 going to unload at the boat ramp, but I've been at enough Holy boat ramps to cow. know that that would be wild to witness. That would be. I mean, that's crazy. Mm -hmm. Wow. That was really cool. Yeah. That was awesome. Randy's got some really cool stuff there. He what was able legend. to He was almost able to take us back in time, what back, a in, legend. back in bow fishing time yeah. to to tell us some stuff. So. We hope you all appreciated that. Yeah, Randy absolutely. There. Absolutely. What time is it for, Schmitty? I think it's time for, is it time for Fish You Wish? Let's find out. Uh-oh. Oh, let's get oh ready boy. To oh, boy. <laughs> get ready for Fish That You Wish. Let's see what we got here. All right. This fish comes to us out of the state that recorded the largest snowflake ever observed that measured 15 inches wide back in January 20th, 1887. What? How's that possible? Nicknamed Big Sky Country mm, Montana. or the Treasure State and home to the Bighorn Mountains and Yellowstone National Park. I'm talking Montana. Mm. 
Clancy Harris found a treasure of his own on May 27th, 2023, when he shot a paddlefish of epic proportions. Measuring 74 inches long, with a girth of 41 and a half inches, this paddlefish tipped the scales at a beefy 105 pounds. Holy guacamole. <laughs> and that is, is a fish you wish you shot. Holy cow. <laughs> Montana. Montana. I wouldn't have thought Montana. I know. That's crazy. Yeah. 105 yep. pounds. And a 15-inch snowflake on top of it, Schmitty. Yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> that's that's they must have been drunk in the 1800s. What are we talking 1887, about? 1887, he measured a 15 inch snowflake. Can you imagine a 15 inch snowflake <laughs> falling from the sky? No, it's not real. I don't know what that is. That's crazy. Holy cow, that is a fish you wish you shot. Gosh. Good lord, oh have gosh. mercy. That is wild. Wow, what a way to wrap it up here. Wow. Oh. Wow. Well, Smitty, tomorrow, oh. don't miss Texas Slew. Surprise oh. Part 2 on Carbon TV. Yes. Yep. Big Gator Gar is all I'm going to say, Smitty. Okay. Big Gator Gar. Got to watch it, guys. Texas Slew Surprise tomorrow. Yes, Carbon sir. TV. Also, go to Carbon TV. We're up for an award. We are up for an award. Yes. Best fishing episode, Nacho Stingray. Yes. Yeah, let's let's go in bulk and get some right. votes With in there. Corey Brassman, Jana Waller. Oh, it was a good time. Yeah, that was a we cool. We fry episode. up them. We fry up that nacho or those stingray meat. Make nachos out of it. Yummy, good stuff yummy. right there. So go vote for us, and also vote for our great friends, Jana Waller, yes. Skullbone Chronicles, yes, best hostess, best big game, and our great great buddy Corey Brassman. They're up for an award as well. Growing up out there, the best kids moment. We all could use your vote because we all love the bowfish. Yes, let's show do. us. Let's show them all what we what bowfishing means to how, all of us. How many of us there oh, are? Yes. Let's go get them. Yep. Yep. Let's get them. So from all of us here at AMS Bowfishing, we wish you the best of luck. Remember, aim low. Oh. And think big. Wow, you reversed the roles. I was ready for it. Good deal. Thanks for listening, everybody. 